Hello and welcome to another episode of Raps and Cool Music. I'm wearing my cap backwards because now I'm a b-boy. Well, supposedly. I can't give myself the title a b-boy if I haven't even nailed one move. Like, really well, at least. But I'm, uh, I'm also wearing shorts. I am curious to see if all my calf training has had any results. I did 500 calf races today and uh, let's see if my calves are as small as they used to be or more muscular looking. Uh, not very good camera angle to actually see anything at all. <sighs> I wonder what I will play for music today. Not very creative, uh, it, uh, but I did 500 calf raises and I even had a very busy work day. It's just that I found the time where I didn't have anything to do to just squeeze in some calf raises. And I realized, hmm, I actually don't look bad in shorts. And I've been made fun of for having skinny calves. <laughs> that my calves were like my weakest part. <laughs> well, I train them every day and I do lots of reps. Anyway, let's look at my collection of Beethoven symphonies. Hmm. I think I'm going for number two. It's a really nice symphony. It has power and... And I'm just gonna do some, a few calf races because they're kind of redundant. I already did like 500. I better start looking for a proper weighted vest so I can add more weight to my body. So, so doing calf races will be more challenging. At the gym, I do calf races with weights. So anyway, let's put on some music by the legendary Ludwig van Beethoven and uh, practice head spin. That's the first thing I will practice because I need my muscles to be fresh when trying a new move. And uh, maybe eventually I will test out other moves because uh, my training is not only about having good cardio uh, and uh, good looking muscles is also the mastery of those muscles being good at using them because I'm also interested in Taekwondo but I realized I'm interested in everything that has to do with cool movements of the body so if it's gymnastics breakdancing parkour whatever I want to learn it all within reason <laughs> so it's good that I start learning the head spin that means I will add another cool move to my repertoire. Uh, okay. Whew. Let's put on some Beethoven and practice head spinning. I remember when I was younger, I did listen to like breakdance music. <laughs> Like if Bomb Funk MCs or Music Instructor or whatever was the thing at the time. And to think that was 20 years ago. That's strange to think about. But there is a big difference between me now and me as a boy who started trying out breakdancing. I'm a lot stronger and I have years of experience in martial arts and strength training. My muscle control and strength is a lot better so <laughs> maybe trying to learn breakdance is not a dumb idea at all even though I'm kind of old but age also comes with experience okay <sighs> Beethoven is not the most typical music for a breakdancer but <laughs> I don't care I listen to what I want to listen to. Anyway, oh, oh. I learned in the breakdance tutorial that you should have uh, feet slightly in front of you and train on tapping. 
Ooh! Oh god, that's just a warm up. <laughs> I got too much leverage. But basically, I think I should go for shorter taps and not get overly excited here. But I started understanding tapping. I was spinning faster than I did uh, yesterday. Oh. Okay, okay. So many calf races. I look better in shorts than I expected I did. Oh, I remember even my bandmate, who's not even a gym bro, who doesn't even lift, made fun of my calves. Back then I actually cared about what people said about me or thought about me. Now I don't care anymore. I work out my calves because I'm a stubborn man. <laughs> and I want to see what my body is capable of in terms of physical development. That's also why I'm trying breakdancing. <laughs> okay, let's see. Ooh, ah. Okay, careful, careful. Even Beethoven recycles some stuff, you know? Because that part of Beethoven's 7th kind of sounded like a part of Beethoven's ninth. <laughs> I even noticed that with Ghost, Tobias Forge, there are some riffs and melodic parts that remind of one another. <laughs> I guess it's just the style of music that makes it recognizable. That's what makes Beethoven recognizable as Beethoven and Ghost as Ghost. Okay, more head spinning. I find this fun. Oop. Okay. Or no! <laughs> I'm tired from a long day, so sorry about more talking and less doing. Oop. Okay. Careful, careful. Just tap. Just tap. Just realize that I'm a beginner at this. <laughs> Hard work makes a man into a man. Uh, uh. And this is good training. It's good to work hard towards bettering yourself. I'm not used to structured training on a head spin. That's a weird move to learn, right? Oop. Okay, tap, tap, gently. Oh, I'm losing balance. I think uh, my feet are too far forward. <sighs> Maybe uh, I'll adjust them further up. Okay, I gotta open the window and drink some water. But you know, I might make it if I do this every day for a month. This is the power of those videos. Because of those videos I did 100 push-ups without stopping once. So I might be able to head spin, but I have to be patient. I will fail a lot until I make it. I was almost falling. <clears throat> Hello. Ah, <clears throat> uh, 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 that was a successful spin. Uh, I just have to get used to the balance and the tapping. Then I can start to, to do more control taps. And that means I hit the ground and tap lightly, and then I start spinning and create momentum. And then I can adjust 
my arms and legs uh, go further out to slow down, further in to gain speed. And then I can end up with my arms like this. <laughs> and uh, I just spin on my head. That's the ultimate goal. To create enough momentum. And then, when I'm in this position, and then I can do this with the arms, and I can do the same with the legs, to manipulate speed and rotation. But I have to work on the absolute basics before getting there. or anything. Training is this. Training is bettering yourself towards a goal. Training does not look impressive. It's the result that looks impressive. But then you have to endure the unimpressive for a long time. <laughs> not necessarily as long as you might think. It's just that you do it every day. So from now on I'm gonna head spin every day. And also do my other exercises. It's good training for core muscles, body control, and it's a wicked move if I can pull it off. <laughs> okay. thing I would for the fun of it put whatever breakdance music you would put on when I was like 14 <laughs> or 15 I think not sure which age I tried this I'm gonna try out some of the moves I knew when I was a boy let's see if I can still do that this is called a freeze oh I can still do that Whew. there was another one called the shoulder freeze which is even easier <laughs> oh, I think I tried learning the windmill, but I think I never made it so far. <sighs> and I managed to stand on my head, but I never did the head spin. And then I just quit because I started Taekwondo and all my interest in breakdancing disappeared. <laughs> now I'm trying to be a b-boy, 20 years later. Okay. Let's do this. Yes! That starts to look like a head spin. I'm gaining momentum. Ha! 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 Okay, more. <laughs> this got very addictive. Probably because I'm figuring it out. Okay. I'm tapping. That's a good sign. 
I can get very far in a month. Oh god, in a month I can actually do a real head spin. Like a real break dancer. That's insane. Do I remember any more moves? I remember a silly move, but it's very easy. I think anyone can do it, and that's probably breakdancing for beginners. <laughs> that one is funny. <sighs> but you know, it was good for me because I was very unathletic as a boy. So I needed to move more and do stuff with my body instead of playing too much video games. <sighs> okay, more head spinning. And then I'm gonna train some calves and abs. <laughs> this is the final spin. Whew. Let's hope I nail it. Look better than last time. That was rad! <laughs> I'm starting to see reality manifesting itself. Me as a breakdancer. Never thought that would happen. But this is a start. You just have to take one step at a time. <laughs> but, but I did the head spin. This, is, this had more spin in it than last time. So let's try again. Let's see if I can do it with more speed. No, I got too eager. Too cocky. But man, this is fun. That's probably how breakdance even came to be. Guys who were athletic, holding their bodies, hanging out, dancing, and showing each other what they can do. Like, I can do an even more wicked move than you. Then they battle each other. That's like a part of breakdancing. So, breakdancers, they spend as much time as possible training to be as rad as possible in the dance. It's kind of cool. Starting to be fascinated by it. Okay. Whoop. <sighs> no. <sighs> Finding the right balance is hard, but I'm at least gonna do one spin before I give up. More water. thought that Beethoven is good workout music anyway, but uh, I'm actually gonna find a bit groovier classical music that fits this better. <laughs> the Bach has like a flute song called Bedinery or something. That one is good to break to. There's even like a hip hopper who sampled this and made a song called Imaginary Places. That's actually a good song. I don't usually like hip-hop that much, but I like that one. Bach is one of the reasons, but still. <laughs> it has cool rhymes and cool beats, and it's probably good for breakdancing. But I can't use it because I will be copy striked, but I can use the original by Bach. But next time, I'm just spinning Beethoven second now. <sighs> Now I'm tired. Enough head spinning now. Whew. I made enough steps towards progress. I don't need the cap anymore. I want to be break dancing. And my body is warm. Let's train some abs. Whew. That was wonderful. Ah. Uh. Wow, my calves don't look half bad. And uh, calves are a very genetic muscle. Like my sister's boyfriend, he's the most gifted person I know. 
because he doesn't work out. He doesn't look muscular, he just looks a little chubby. But his calves looks like the calves of a bodybuilder. He has never worked out in his life, he doesn't even care about it. But he has calves like a bodybuilder. <laughs> Without even trying. <laughs> uh, so calves are very genetic muscle. So my calves most likely will never get really big. But I will train them to their best potential. <sighs> because that's the attitude the lifter should have. Should not be limited by genetics. Bruce Lee didn't have extraordinary genetics or anything. He just really worked hard and became an extraordinary athlete. It was his effort that was extraordinary. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, Time to buy the beanie I planned at work today. I was too busy working because actually using that cap kind of hurts. It's kind of a cool look. <laughs> Having the cap backward, you kind of makes me kind of look like a 90s b-boy. Well, not far from it. I, I was a youngster who tried break dancing in the early 2000s. <sighs> Anyway, whew. okay, let's do some leg raises for my ab muscles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, oh god! Ah, <laughs> I'm gonna do a plank, I guess. Whew. Whew. Ah, ay, ay, ay. I get better results just break dancing a teensy bit. 20 years later based on something I only spent maybe a few months of my life doing <laughs> huh. so if I nail that head spin I would feel proud I would also try to train better control of handstand because I do handstand push-ups against the wall but I'm not really good at just balancing on my hands. If I could balance on my hands really well, since I already have the strength for a handstand push-up, so I'm already strong enough, so I just need to practice balance. That could be the foundation of other cool moves. One move I can't even do at home, but, but if I have the necessary control and it's comfortable standing on my hands, then I can do a handstand and spin, spin on my hands. And that's, that's called the air flare, where you have your legs out, but it's like I will kick a bunch of things if I could do the air flare here. So I could train being good at the handstand. That's something I can do at home, but the air flare must be done in the aerobics room at the gym. <laughs> okay, some more water. Then it's time to train some plank, and then uh, then calves. Then we will stretch and be done. Okay. Okay, let's plank it to Beethoven. Oh. <sighs> hmm, I can hold the plank a lot longer now. I feel comfortable in this position. I can even talk comfortably. Oh, that's good. It means my abs are getting a lot stronger. It's like I feel it more in the legs than the actual abs. I'm gonna train abs tomorrow as well. Okay, time for some calf raises, even though I did 500 earlier. It's just basically because I'm wearing shorts and I wanna study how my calves look. I'm not gonna brag about having really awesome muscular calves because they are my weakest point. <laughs> but I'm working on them. One, two, three, four. 
requires a different mood. I don't know. But I have a basic saying about music and training. All good music is good workout music. And I stand by that. Even relaxing piano music is better than anyone putting crap music, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. All good music is good training music. But Beethoven symphonies are very energetic, so they're really good for working out. Anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 33, 32, I mean 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Ah, let's do 50 more so I can total it up to what I did at work combined with what I did at home. Then it will become 700. Isn't that insane? That's just a clue that I need to add some weight. If I really want to make my calves grow, 
and I'm already able to do hundreds of reps, I need to add weight. That's why I need to start looking for a good weighted vest that I can put on a lot of weight. Then my calves will put on a lot of meat. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, oh god, 700 calf races in a day. I need to have a closer look. Yeah, no matter how unimpressive they look, I can say for a fact, this is what calves that has done 700 calf races in one day look like. Look at those stylish tattoos. Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin. They're my jam. Oh. Whew. Huh. Okay. That means I have done the most important parts of today's workout and I even did before work I did some uh, pull-ups I think it was like 12 maybe and uh, I was waiting on a bus stop waiting for my way back from work I was doing pull-ups there too 16 then I came home and I did eight more. That's a total of 36. Not bad. Those are some reps. Adds up, you know. Don't have to go all full out. Just need. Ah, I just need some regular habits of buffness that makes me buff. <clears throat> But overall, I have a very athletic physique. It seems like my work has yielded some results. But a warning to any random stranger that stumbles into this video. I have trained for many years in the past, so it comes easier to those who have been strong than a person who has never been strong at all, you know? And it depends on what you view as strong, because I've never been a competitive athlete. I've just been a, quite a bit stronger than the average man. <laughs> and uh, I probably still am, because I have rega regained a lot of my strength and mass. <sighs> Stronger and bigger. Uh, 
But at least I'm not very far off from my best. <sighs> but I remember being leaner and more muscular at the same time. <sighs> but... <sighs> to a patient and consistent man, everything will be earned. To hard effort over time and consistency. <sighs> That was the end of Beethoven's second symphony. Okay, I have to turn down the sound a little bit. On this CD is also the fourth. And I need the lower sound for uh, stoicism. <laughs> Seems like now even my videos where I supposedly take it easy because I had the workout at the gym the day before. It still takes me 40 minutes. It's one simple reason. The head spin training. It takes a little time. But I, I am documenting my progress basically. Because one fun fact, I only trained the head spin for this videos. <laughs> so, but... I will start training some head spin at the gym because when I go to the gym, if the aerobics room is empty, I will train the head spin before I start anything else because my muscles need to be fresh in order for me to try and learn a new technique. I can warm up a little bit, but that's all. Because warming up is good to avoid injuries. It's cold outside. And when I bicycle outside, I, I get cooled down, you know? So I, I might risk an injury if I start head spinning without any kind of warm up. So I will warm up a little first. Uh, and so uh, I might extend my head spin practice to the gym. It's a fun move though. <laughs> And I imagine how satisfying it will be once I nail that move. Ugh. Oh. Once I nail that move, I just have to aim at other moves. Particularly training good balance at the handstand, because that's a gateway to many good breakdance moves. And the air flare is one of my favorites. The air flare is even cooler than the head spin and the windmill combined. Anyway, whew, let's bring out the daily stoic, I forgot. <laughs> but at least I got a startup stretch. Oh, yes. Whew. It really clears my head, long day at work. But a lot of time people just feel exhausted, right? I felt exhausted too. But once I started moving and listening to Beethoven, I, do, I felt like I was having fun. Especially challenging myself at the head spin. That was the most fun part of all. <sighs> but I also like the conditioning work as usual, but the head spin adds something different to my training. <laughs> it's not even related to any of my other pursuits like martial arts and strength training, but in a way it is, because mastering your body, the better control you have of your body, it translates to every other skill, you know, because I strengthen my abs, I get better balance and coordination, and all that translates well into strength training and martial arts as well. And I like to be able to control my body in various ways. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Ooh. Hmm. Okay, I I'm not sure which day it is today. <laughs> I just have to check what I've read. 
Hmm. Okay, I, I'll just start with the ninth then. Maybe I haven't read it. Uh, find the right scene. Above all, keep a close watch on this, that you're never so tied to your former acquaintances and friends that you're pulled down to their level. If you don't, you'll be ruined. You must choose whether to be loved by these friends and remain the same person, or to become a better per person at the cost of those friends. If you try and have it both ways, you will neither make progress nor keep what you once had. Epictetus Discourses. Oh, then uh, there is another quote. From good people you learn good, but if you mingle with the bad, you'll destroy such soul as you had. Musonius Rufus, quoting Theognis of Megara Lectures. Okay, that one was really good. Jim Rohn's widely quoted line is, You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. James L. Tucker advises young writers and entrepreneurs to find their scene, a group of peers who push them to be better. Your father might have given you a warning when he saw you spending time with some bad kids. Remember, you become like your friends. One of Goethe's maxims captures it better. Tell me with whom you with whom you consort and I will tell you who you are. Consciously consider whom you allow into your life. Not like some snobby elitist, but like someone who's trying to cultivate the best life possible. Ask yourself about the people you meet and spend time with. Are they making me better? Do they encourage me to push forward and hold me accountable? Or do they drag me down to their level? Now with this in mind, ask the most important question. Should I spend more or less time with these folks? The second part of Goethe's quote tells us the stakes of this choice. If I know how you spend your time, then I know what might become of you. Well, you see, I spend time reading stoicism, training head spin, stretching out my legs, playing the piano. I might be a great musician and a martial artist and a dancer and a philosopher. <laughs> if I'm consistent enough, I guess. Um, and also, I am more picky about the company I have around me. I even had to drop a friend of mine because I realized that he wasn't good for me. He did make me miserable and he had so many issues that kind of ruined my own happiness. I don't have anything against him as a person, it's just that I can't have him in my life. And I just had to say it like straight out. Like, fix your own problems, I don't want to be involved in them. Sometimes you have to be cold to really wish the best for both me and that person. Because if you're miserable with someone, you don't want to spend that time with that person. Because this time you have in your life, you will never get back. We will all die. We have to enjoy this, appreciate this, don't take this for granted. Okay, March the 10th. That was yesterday. <laughs> Find yourself a Cato. We can remove most sins if we have a witness standing by as we are about to go wrong. The soul should have someone it can respect, by whose example it can make its inner sanctum more inviolable. Happy is the person who can improve others, not only when present, but even in their thoughts. Seneca, Moral Letters. Cato the Younger, a Roman politician, best known for his self-discipline and heroic defense of the Republic against Julius Caesar, appears constantly throughout Stoic literature, which is interesting because he didn't write anything down, he taught no classes, he gave no interviews, his bold and brave example is what made him such a commonly cited and quoted philosopher. Seneca tells us that we should each have our own Cato, great and noble person we can allow into our minds and use to guide our actions, even when they are not physically present. The economist Adam Smith had a similar concept. 
which he called the indifferent spectator. It doesn't have to be an actual person, just someone who, like Seneca said, can stand witness to our behavior. Someone who can quietly admonish us if we are considering doing something lazy, dishonest, or selfish. If, and if we do it right and live our lives in such a way, perhaps we can serve as someone else's Cato or indifferent spectator when they need it. Oh, one of my favorite role models is Utsumaki Naruto. Uh, in some ways he's a good stoic, in other ways eh, he's a comical, noisy ninja who's clumsy and awkward and brags a lot and talks big, he boasts a lot. But you know, there is meaning behind his boasting, he never whines. He grew up without any parents, he was bullied and made fun of by the other kids. He seemed like clumsy and didn't do anything right. And he was extremely lonely, but he always bragged about becoming the Hokage, the top ninja in town, right? And uh, of course he had no game with girls, he was really into a girl named Sakura. Sakura didn't care for him at all. She only had eyes for Sasuke, the cold, uh, the, the cold and mysterious man who seemed mature and handsome beyond his years, because this is a story about teenagers, like 12 to 13 years old. They get older throughout the series, but still. Uh, he seems like the archetypical person that someone would think of when you first think of a stoic because he's like seems so calm and cool and detached. But he's the exact opposite actually because he lives only for revenge. Because uh, his brother killed his entire family. And all he lives for is to become stronger than him and beat him. Right? Well Naruto, he, he just moves forward to... Uh, despite all the pain and misery he has endured and he's just as lonely as Sasuke so they through the plot they eventually become best friends because they realize how similar they are even though Sasuke is cool and sexy while Naruto is weird and awkward right Sasuke is basically the boy every boy wants to be but as you look into them you realize that Naruto is actually the better stoic he actually makes a lot of friends and become a hero to all and eventually becomes the Hokage. And he does mature a bit on his more immature tantrums or whatever because those, those features are not very stoic. It's like, if you think about Naruto characters, I would think Kakashi Sensei is the most stoic because he's very well balanced. He's kind and sweet, has a warm heart, but he's also cool and calm on the outside like Sasuke but he has a good heart and he does not live for revenge he tried to stop Sasuke because he's like by by seeking revenge you're digging two graves that's what Kakashi sensei said to Sasuke but uh, <laughs> enough about Naruto I have another stoic quote to read uh, but I love Naruto. I think Naruto is not uh, just a cartoon for children. It teaches a lot about people's character and it shows a lot of good character development. Okay, March 11th. Living without restriction. The unrestricted person, which has in hand what they will in all events, is free. But anyone who can be restricted, coerced, or pushed into something against what they will is a slave. Epictetus discourses. Take a look at some of the most powerful, rich, and famous people in the world. Ignore the trappings of their success and what they're able to buy. Look instead at what they're forced to trade in return. Look at what success has cost them. Mostly, freedom. Their work demands they wear a suit. Their success depends on attending certain parties, kissing up to people they don't like. It will require, inevitably, realizing they are unable to say what they actually think. Worse, it demands that they become a different type of person or do bad things. 
Sure, it might pay well, but they haven't truly examined the transaction. As Seneca put it, slavery resides under marble and gold. Too many successful people are prisoners in jails of their own making. Is that what you want? Is that what you're working hard towards? Let's hope not. <laughs> ah! The only way I want to become rich, like truly rich if that ever happens, would be if I could become a rock star. Because then I would do what I'm best at. And I, it would be my ultimate dream, not because of money alone, because I have enough money to live a decent life. I'm not complaining. I have it better than many people. So mm, the biggest reason why I would want that is to do what I'm best at. <laughs> and ooh, now uh, it's time for me to eat and relax. I had a long work day. I even played some piano before this video. So, so I encourage everyone to take care of themselves, their body, their thoughts, and their life goals every day, no matter what. There is no excuses. I was tired when I came home, but now I feel energized. And on that note, have a nice evening and stay buff.